I'm Alana Lawson with Fine Dining TV and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Vivek Singh at his London restaurant Cinnamon Kitchen. Lovely to meet you. Likewise, lovely to meet you too Alana. Thank you. Now you grew up many hundreds of thousands of miles away from here in Bengal, India. Correct. Can you tell me what made you decide to be a chef? What was it that kind of spurred that passion? I really can't put a finger on when was it exactly that I decided to be, uh, become a chef? But I, I can pretty much put a finger on when I realized I loved food. And that must sort of take me back to the time when I must have been a, you know, a boy of eight or nine. I loved attending weddings. I absolutely adored every single social function and event uh, that we were invited to. And that's, I suppose, when I, I, I bit the bug. <laughs> uh, as far as choosing the profession is concerned, I think it's more a case of uh, a happy chance where uh, my profession chose me rather than the other way around. Um, so you did, as you said, do your formal education at hotel school and then you um, began your career in India. Was there anything that you wanted to explore or do differently in your own restaurant um, during that time? My training included working you know, in, from butchery to bakery to garde manger to a uh, Thai restaurant to a French uh, fine dining uh, to, of course, Indian. And all that learning really sort of internalizes itself and manifests itself in a totally different way. It opens your eyes to, to actually realizing that, you know, there's a lot more to cooking than you believe your cuisine has. Right. Um, so do you think you, did you, had you always had London in mind during that time, those initial years, or did that come later? I think the choice of London came much later. For, for a sort of good seven or eight years when I was cooking in India, I was very happy cooking in India, um, doing the kind of, uh, you know, uh, my learning in various restaurants, but also um, uh, cooking Indian food at a very, very high caliber. Having done that for three or four years in, and, and having run two of the finest Indian restaurants in the country at the time, I realized that, you know, um, even though I wanted to cook for the rest of my life, there was absolutely nothing new that I was doing. So I had this desire to sort of push the boundaries a little bit, create a bit more elbow room, a little bit more innovation, a bit more experimentation. And um, yeah, so I was looking to do a, a different kind of Indian food. I, I didn't quite know what I would call it. Uh, in my head, it, you know, it was saying that it ought to be you know, modern Indian. It's something that is evolving and that, you know, that kind of represents the, the energy and the aspiration and the color and the boldness of the new young India that I was living in. Um, somehow the food at the time, certainly in restaurants, in fine dining restaurants, uh, wasn't quite telling that story. I thought at the time London was as good as any, if not better, simply because I didn't have to worry about teaching people what a tandoori chicken and a naan bread was because I knew very well that London was very fond of its Indian food. So the, the, the stage was already set. What was your greatest challenge in um, starting out here? I don't think it was about challenging people's perception as in the, the customer's perception of Indian food. I think it was more challenging uh, the perception of uh, our teams and my own chefs uh, that you know, what we were setting out to do was the right thing to do. Because before it's done, you know, sometimes things have to be believed to be seen. And, and because there was no precedence, the only thing that was going to work was to believe and to try. And, um, you know, so it took some conviction um, for me to sort of explain to, the, to my chefs why when we took a decision of cooking a piece of fish differently, it was for the betterment of the fish and as a result, betterment of the dish and in the longer term for the betterment of the cuisine. As long as it looks good and tastes even better, that's what food should be all about. And what do you think is the biggest urban myth um, when it comes to Indian food? Do you think perceptions are changing at all or if they're, you know, if they're the same as what they were? I think perceptions of, certainly with Indian food, have, have changed a, you know, a whole deal, a great deal in the last 14, 15 years. I think the, the understanding, the appreciation, the interaction, the engagement, the appetite for good quality seasonal uh, produce that you know, is being treated with respect and food that's being cooked with love and, and a bit of intelligence and innovation. Uh, I think the appetite is incredible. So a contribution to that might be one of your many cookbooks. I understand you've written seven. Can you tell me what the concept uh, is behind your most recent cookbook, Spice at Home? It's partly um, about the kind of food that I grew up with. Uh, when I was little, my mother used to cook, do a certain kind of cooking. Uh, some of the dishes that stuck with us and 
household favorites and you know I wanted to share that but part of it is also about um, the way in in which we live today uh, so we live in a very cosmopolitan very metropolitan environment we have access to ingredients like you know very few people have living in a city like London working the way we do lives have changed lifestyles have changed and the way people are interacting with food is changing uh, one interesting point I thought was uh, that I see um, in restaurants, people want to see more and more of home influences, you know, home stories, and home style dishes coming up to the fore and relaxed presentations and so on. So at home, I see completely different. People are becoming more and more aspirational about trying to recreate restaurant style dishes, you know, Absolutely. and trying to do uh, all of that. So pushing the boat out in that sense. And I thought it was a really interesting uh, fact that the two worlds were going to meet like this. So, you know, my, this book includes uh, certain European favorites, such as the roast, and how you could kind of chase it up by using a bit of spice. Um, so it, it has favorites of mine, like a chicken and tandoori chicken and cheese toasty. Um, that could be a wonderful snack um, to everything in between, really. So tell me, what is one dish, if you could choose just one dish, that you would uh, pass on to your children? I don't know if one dish is going to be enough to pass on, um, but... Um, I'd love for them to um, to love food and feeding people as much as I do because I think that's just quite an amazing uh, spirit. If even one of them um, end up retaining a quarter or a tenth of that, I'd be incredibly happy. So Vivek, you have written seven cookbooks and founded three restaurants. Where to from here? I don't know to be honest, but I do think of um, uh, myself as ha having this responsibility of taking this ethos and this uh, philosophy of Indian food which is more current, which is more uh, modern, more uh, as I say in line with the aspirations of the new uh, vibrant India as I know. Um, I see us sort of taking and spreading the good word and you know taking it to wherever people want to have. Um, the thing about Indian food is being so successful is because it adapts beautifully and so I see absolutely no reason why one should stop doing this, you know, this age-old thing of what we uh, believed at the cinnamon restaurants about taking traditional Indian cooking techniques and traditional Indian spicing and combining that with the very best local seasonal produce wherever in the world you may be cooking. So that's what I'd like to do for the rest of my life. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us my today. Pleasure.